Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, members and guests. It's November the 18th, 2024, and this is a regular online meeting of the West Shore Photography Club. So welcome. <laughs> we have an image review tonight. Mike Donovan's going to take care of that, and the theme is Blue Hour. But before we get to that, uh, just a, a few words of wisdom. Our next online meeting will be held on December the 2nd, and the uh, topic will be Capture and Enhance Mood in Black and White Landscape Photography. Okay, that's December the 2nd, and uh, I think uh, the email will go out on that tomorrow with the link to the meeting. Gene, uh, would you tell us about uh, upcoming trips? Sure. Uh, on Friday, we will be going to the state capitol, um, meeting there at 10, and um, Joe's contact at the, at the capitol uh, graciously set up an agenda, which has been on the um, mem emails that we've been sending, so you can check that out. Then on Saturday, we're going to Ashcombs at 9 o'clock. Um, in the morning, we start there. Um, is Elaine on? Uh, no, she is not. Couldn't make okay. it tonight. Um, Elaine uh, was able to get us an hour there before uh, Ashcombs opens. So you can take a tripod then, but after the store opens, then they ask the tripods get put away. Um, and, you know, just be cognizant of the... Um, the customers and not being in their way or whatnot. <laughs> Although I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's kind of crowded. It would be kind of cool, but um, we'll see. And then let's see what we have coming up in December is um, the Harrisburg photo walk and Mary and Eve are in charge of that or either one of those on, on board tonight, Mary or Don't. Eve. Doesn't look like it. Okay. Um, so those memos will be going out probably by the end of this week for that. And then in um, January, we have the Antique Auto Museum. And um, Mike and Eve will be in charge of that. And I have Mike's information ready to go. And then on the 24th of January, um, it's tentative right now for Maple Press. I see Rich's on online there. Um, if we can, do you have any updates for us now, Rich, on that? I'm working through that. So I think okay. it'll be fine. I just need to get, I need to get the final approval. Gotcha. All right. So hopefully um, we'll have that. And that's all the upcoming trips as of right now. Okay. Very good. Yeah, that trip to the state capitol, uh, that's always well attended. And if you've been there before, you know what to expect. If you haven't, it's a real treat uh, because we get in some areas that the general public doesn't. And uh, there's so much to photograph. It's, it's really a cool, cool thing to do. Okay, I want to take a minute uh, and ask member Chris Scott to tell you about his uh, YouTube channel. All right. Hey, thanks, Dennis. Uh, members of the club. Uh, my name is Chris Scott. I'm a content creator for On One Photo Raw primarily. And I have a YouTube channel where my goal is to inspire people to keep creating. So I spent a lot of time making tutorials, teaching how to use On One Photo Raw, uh, which is a photo editor, very similar to Lightroom for those who aren't familiar with it. And, you know, the, the main goal with the channel is just to help people learn how to use the software. And if you want to migrate from using Lightroom to something that's a one-time payment, then On One is a great option to uh, look into. So if you want to check out some of the content and, you know, kind of learn a little bit about uh, how the software works and if it's something that's good for your workflow, then check out the channel. And I'm in the comments section there, so you can leave a comment and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. So thanks, Dennis, for letting me share. Okay. And the name of your YouTube channel is? Free Will Photos. Free Will Photos. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Very good, Chris. Thanks a lot. Okay. At this time, I'm going to turn the meeting over to our very own Mike Donovan, who's going to conduct the image review. Thanks, Mike. Okay, you're welcome. 
Let me try the share button, see what happens. <laughs> Let's hope good things. <laughs> I will, I agree. <laughs> okay, so far so good. Let's go to full screen mode. We okay? Are we okay? Well, I'm not sure on my screen. I don't see it yet. How about yeah, anybody I else? It. I see it, Mike. I can okay, see it. I, I have two I screens, so I have to move things around. Go ahead. And can you hear me? Yep. Yes. 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 Okay. All right. Um, as Dennis said, the theme is blue hour photography. And the fact that we got only eight images made me start thinking, and I mentioned beforehand, uh, one of three things. Um, the club doesn't like themes. One of four things. The club doesn't like blue hour. The club doesn't like image reviews or the club doesn't like my image reviews. So hopefully it's one of the first three, but um, when we have a theme, go for it. Absolutely go for it. Now down in the bottom left, I have a website. Usually I try to recommend certain artists or photographers, but this time I'm recommending a website that might inspire you to do some um, blue hour photography. And it's the photoargus.com front slash 40 inspiring examples of blue hour photography. So hopefully if you take a look at that, that might inspire you to uh, to give it a shot. It only blue hour lasts for maybe an hour or so, so it's not really a huge time investment. But um but yeah, see what you think, and maybe you'll find some new idea that you enjoy. Okay, I'll let that up for another moment or two, and then uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Like I said, usually I try to recommend artists, uh, whether painters or photographers or sculptors or whatever, but this time it's going to be a, a mix of all different people's work. Okay, and Dennis, if you want, you, you're certainly welcome to put that on the email tomorrow morning if you wish. Absolutely, I will. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and get started. And thanks, by the way, to the people that submitted, because it's not always the easiest thing to do to put your stuff up in front of other people. And if you did that, you get a gold star already. <laughs> okay, let me get um, the view taken care of here. Not that I don't want to see everybody, but okay. Okay, this is called Midtown at Dusk, as you can see. And what I've done this evening is I tried to split into four main sections because of, of the theme. Um, technical, composition, color, and processing. So those are the four, the four things that I really want to concentrate on. I thought about impact, but all of these have impact. So, so let's stick with those four mainly. As far as technical goes, um, I wanna make some suggestions and then some compliments. And my first suggestion is, and this is, this is difficult, there's a bit of a halo that runs across the top of the mountain. And that generally happens when there's such a big contrast and you maybe over sharpen or sharpen one too much or the other. If you are masking and sharpening, then I might suggest you feather your mask, meaning when you feather your mask, you um, kind of fuzzy up the edges. And then many times that little halo or that little white cap will disappear. Now, Chris was mentioning on one, on one has a tool called a chisel tool that you can run across the top of the mountains and that'll peel off 10, five pixels, whatever you say. So be a little careful with, especially with these kind of photographs, about um, haloing. The exposure is on the button. There's um, information in the mountains. There's not really any big black blobs to deal with or any white burnouts um, that are of any size. I'm going to mention one or two a little later. Uh, you have detail in the sky. The sky is soft and beautiful, and that, that's really what a blue hour sky can look like. Very, very nice there. Uh, sharp focus, 
It's not always easy to do, especially when you have a longer exposure. You don't want to bump your tripod or sneeze or a car goes by or whatever. This looks good. Composition-wise, uh, the crop is absolutely appropriate to the image. Really, really nice idea there. The tendency is to want to crop the same size a lot. Now, um, when I do a, a like an arts and crafts show, I crop everything to the size that the mat can be a standard frame size because nobody wants to buy a $50 print and spend $300 on a custom frame. So my my cropping on that side of things on the, I don't know, commercial side or whatever is usually standard, but I like it on this side, the artsy side, when you can crop to the proper pro crop of the image. So nice job there. Um, I like that you have a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. The foreground, you can see the trees there in the lower left, which starts to provide some depth. Then you go to the middle ground, which is the city itself, and then to the background, the mountains and the sky. Real nice use of layers there. A light, a dark, uh, a dark, a little lighter, a little light. The layers help with depth for sure. So good job there. Uh, let's see. The horizontal lines, as you probably remember, horizontal um, is more peaceful, more relaxing. And one other thing these two horizontal lines do, the, the front street and the bridge, is they provide a linear perspective, which almost forces you to start on the left side of the image and follow to the right side where you know about I don't know, a foot or two outside of your computer screen, there's a vanishing point in the linear perspective. So nice job there to lead the viewer from left to right. And since we're in the Western Hemisphere and we do our reading from left to right, that makes viewing this image more comfortable. So, um, so very nice there. Uh, let's see. As um, I've talked with you before, lighter values, meaning lighter shades, I guess you would say. Um, lighter values advance to the viewer and darker values recede from the viewer. And that provides tremendous depth. Look how much closer the bridge looks than the mountains in the back. But it's a flat image. It's absolutely flat. So what you want is depth in your image and this has it for sure. Uh, let's see. Eye catching uh, makes the city look very, very beautiful. Color wise, the orange and the blue complementary color scheme is is just usually great, absolutely great. So very nice work there with the orange and the blue. Again, a complementary color scheme. The blue makes the orange oranger, and the orange makes the blue bluer. So um, good work there. And there's a bit of purple and yellow as well. You can see the yellow in the windows of the buildings and the purple, you can see some down here and some up here. So you can see another complementary color scheme. Okay, the last thing is processing. And I have a, a suggestion there. And that is right here. I know you think it's ridiculous, but this is probably the lightest value on the whole image, except for these. And these, um, they're in their proper environment. So it's not like they're jumping right out at you. I would remove that because once you see it, it's hard to unsee. And if you would ever print this, there would be forever. So that's an easy fix. Um, Whatever you use software-wise, that's easy to remove. But everything else, I think, looks good. So you can see here, here, and here, and here, that value is lighter. So it will jump to you. And one other thing I might suggest is see what you can do about this. One of the reasons it's a little bit disturbing to the eye is I don't see what it's reflecting. 
So maybe if you want to take care of that, again, that's a lighter value and it wants to come forward. Uh, let's see. So everything else I think looks really good. The color scheme is beautiful. The cropping is excellent. Your compositional use. Oh, I know. I wanted to mention how nice these pairs are. And suddenly there's just one. And then back to the pairs. Um, I learned at Hack that a lot of times when there's one thing different from all the others, it makes all the others stronger. So, um, so good work there. Okay, who did this photograph? That's mine, Mary Eileen Carson. Okay, if you think that I'm not making any sense, don't say that. <laughs> no, I, I, I appreciate your your comments. And, and after a while, as you went on and on, I started to think, geez, he likes this better than I do. <laughs> One thing about having a photograph judged is many times the judges find things that you don't even think about or know are there. Yes, yes, yes. But no, I appreciate your comments. And um, yeah, I, sh I shall work on this. Well, anytime, any remarks that I have, any suggestions, try it. And if you don't like it, go oh, back yeah. to go back to what you like because yes. you're the you're the photographer. Yes, I agree. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Hey, Mike. Yes. Would, would, would you be okay if we opened it up after each image for discussion, since we only have eight images and uh, we'll have plenty okay. of time? All yeah. right. Anyone have a comment or a question for Mike or uh, Mary Eileen about this image? Mary Eileen, do you have any idea what's causing that pinkish uh, area that Mike was referring to under the bridge? No, not at all. Okay. I, yeah. I, I, I can't be what's sitting up on Front Street. So there has to have been maybe something sitting in the water there or something. I, I have no idea where that came from. Yeah, it's a mystery. Yes. Okay, yeah, lovely image. Other questions or comments from anybody? Mary Eileen, to maintain my reputation, take that little white spot out, too. <laughs> <laughs> I rely on you, Mike, to find all the little things I need to get out of there that I don't see. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right. Okay. Manhattan, as seen from Brooklyn. Um Technical wise, you can see, and I hesitate to discuss sharpness because it's on so many different computer screens. And I've mentioned before that something's a little softer and the person tells me, well, it's really sharp on mine. And I don't doubt that for a second. So let me say that this is sharp and clean and, and leave it at that. Um, what's very cool is um, the blue structure in the middle, that's Pier 17. And the lights, now that they have the, the blue up, they can change colors and go along with music and all this and that kind of thing. But I like that it's blue here. So uh, good job with that. Uh, no haloing that I could find anywhere. And again, with such a sharp contrast, that's not always easy. Also... Um, the sky is really, really smooth, so there's no noise in there. And many of these probably were done with a high ISO. So you run it through a noise reducer and you have a smooth, creamy sky. Very nice. Composition-wise, again, the cropping is absolutely on the button. It's perfect and appropriate for your image. Very nice work there. Uh, Composition-wise, I like the mix of horizontals and verticals, which, you know, in, in Manhattan, it's almost impossible to get away from. Even the lights in the building provide quite a few horizontals, and then the building themselves are the verticals. So um, good composition there. Also, um, I think this is, I think, FDR Drive down here. And it really provides a nice base for your entire image. It separates the water from the 
from the buildings, from the, the city, but yet it's not overbearing. It's a nice line, and being that it's horizontal, it's calming, just like the water being a long, thick horizontal line. It's calming and relaxing, which is really kind of opposite of what happens when you're in the city itself. Uh, let's see. No cutoffs at the edges, meaning your crop is good. You have that little, is that the Empire State Building back there, maybe? Or the Chrysler Building, it looks like. Um, you included that, which is really nice because it's balanced over here by the Statue of Liberty. So, so nice crop, nice composition there. Very, very nice. Uh, let's see. The rhythm of repeated shapes is everywhere, as you can see, especially in Pier 17. That's really cool with all the repetition of the, um, the vertical lines there. Very nice. The reflections in the water provide a layer, and then the city provides a layer, and then the sky provides a layer. So you're, you're working with depth there. Uh, as far as color goes, you probably remember or know already that blue is calming, a uh, little bit melancholy maybe, a little bit, um, well, when they say you're feeling blue. So um, I like that this has the blue, but yet that little tiny touch of orange on the left kind of saves it. The, the Again, the complementary color scheme. And you're probably realizing by me saying this that Orange and blue is really big in this world. It's a wonderful combination. Uh, Bluebirds, the New York Knicks jerseys, um, there, there's blue and orange combo everywhere. So keep an eye open for that because it's effective. Uh, let's see here. As far as processing goes, one suggestion that I have is here on the Brooklyn Bridge, maybe darken this down a little bit. Because what happens is at, if your eye is following this diagonal and you're gonna, it's wanting you to stop there because it's a high, high value and it's coming toward you. And really this is where you wanna end up. So I would darken this just a bit or even more than just a bit and see what you think. The diagonal line, uh, you might remember, has to do with motion or action, and that's perfect for people coming in and out of the city. Uh, let's see. I think that's all that I, oh, I know. Um, if you're thinking, well, what about these whites here? Look at those whites and look at this white. Now this one, well, that's white, but look at the value. It's not as white as this is. Maybe you want to deal with that too. But other than that, it's a beautiful shot. Um, the composition's great. You use color well. It's nice and sharp, but still a little touch creamy. So good work. Who did this one? Uh, excuse me, uh, that was mine, Doug Cinnamon. Were you in, you were in Brooklyn, in Brooklyn I presume, shooting across? Uh, yeah, there's a, a group of folks that went from the uh, Chester County Camera Club. It was a trip sponsored, and uh, we visited Central Park during the day, and then uh, it was time so that uh, we would be in Brooklyn at the park uh, at the Blue Hour. Uh, to uh, to shoot the skyline. Are you uh, happy with this? Yeah, um, it's um, it was a little challenging to take, but um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, it was just, it's a you know it's always beautiful to to photograph New York City, and uh, I do appreciate your comments about um, about the bridge, the uh, the brightness of the bridge, and I'll uh, I'll turn that down and um, and have a look. But thanks very much. You're very welcome. Okay, any questions or comments for Doug or Michael on this image? Hey, Doug, I've got a question for you. Was this was this a stitch of multiple images? Yes, it was. 
<clears throat> excuse me. Um, I don't remember how many um, individual images it was, but um, it was a it was a, a panoramic stitch, and I believe I did it in Affinity. Oh, very nice. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Doug, Mike had mentioned about uh, ISO. Uh, do you have any idea what ISO you might have used, or at least the what exposure time you used? Uh, you know, I'd have to go back and take a look, but it, the ISO was cranked up pretty high, yeah. and uh, I'm I'm virtually certain that I ran the raw files through uh, DXO Pure Raw Four uh, mm -hmm. before I did any further processing because that saves you every time. <laughs> Okay. It looks like it was not exceptionally long of a shutter speed because of the way the water looks. Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to make a quick comment. Um, sure. This is a amazing image, so thanks for sharing it. Um, I actually really like the bridge. I, I'm a little uh, atypical when it comes to uh, photography. And I like that it stops me at the bridge so I can take a little bit more time in that area of the image before I continue moving on. And then I get another stop with the uh, the Pier 17, and mm -hmm. that allows me to just kind of focus in on that area as well. So um, I, I really do appreciate the bridge being lit up like that. That's That's actually the beauty of it, is you explain why you think that's good I explain why I think it might need attention, and he decides. <laughs> so very cool. And thanks, Chris, by the way. Anybody Any else? Comment? Yeah, anyone else? Okay. Okay, Sunrise at Avalon Pier. First of all, gold star for Sunrise. I don't think I've seen a sunrise in 20 years. So very good there. Uh, it's a it's an excellent exposure in a difficult situation for sure. Um, the the lights. Some might say, oh, the lights are burned out. Uh, well, that that can't be helped. That's just how it is. But it also provides some perspective too. So I I have no complaints about any kind of burnout or anything. And I think I've mentioned before, when you print this image, um, there, in your, in your um, ink set, you probably notice there is no white ink. That will let the paper show through there. So if you like that, okay. If not, you just put a tiny, tiny little bit of pigment in there and at least some ink will go down. But I don't mind it. I like the, the white lights for sure. It looks like, again, no noise, which is impressive on these um, high ISO shots for sure. Uh, you exposed really beautifully everything that we're supposed to see, we see. Some is in silhouette, some is not. So um, good work there in the technical side of things. Composition-wise, the use of linear perspective, again, um, linear perspective is, is two converging lines. In this case, one's imaginary. It's on the other side of the pier. And they converge at a, um, a vanishing point somewhere far out. And that makes a person start and travel through the image. And that, that's always good. You have some beautiful, beautiful curves in the water really really nice um i like the reflections and actually the lights and their reflections in the water provide uh, a linear perspective as well they themselves travel out to a vanishing point um you've heard of repeated shapes the lights provide that the piles under the pier provide that the railings provide that so composition wise um, very strong. Again, layers provide depth for you. You can see the sand and then the water and then the sky and, and good work there. Uh, let's see. 
I like the light on the sand in the lower right. That tells me that there's a light up on top in the pier shining down onto the sand, which is kind of a continuation of the lights getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. In your imagination, there's a bigger one right up above the corner of the image shining down on the sand. And I like that. I, I think it looks really good. Uh, let me see here. A mix of vertical lines and horizontal lines. Uh, wonderful. And uh, I mentioned before that vertical lines are emblematic of strength and power. Um, I always mention that the old time banks always had pillars, whether they needed them or not, because the vertical lines show, show safety and strength. So, um, so good use there of the verticals. Again, the orange and blue complementary color scheme is a beautiful thing. There's even a little bit yellow and purple. There's some yellow on the sand that was lit up by the light up above. And there's some purple in the top of the sky. Very, very nice. Um, and again, good use of, of white, actually, in the image on the water on the corner here of the foam and of course the um the lights up above now as far as suggestions i might have processing wise um if it's possible i would get rid of this trash can here and you can do that with a clone just and it, it's perfect because this is all one color and you can just continue it on so if if you do cloning Try it there and see what you think. Maybe you want to get rid of these too. That That's up to you. If it's not bothersome to you, don't do it. Uh, one other thing I would consider is down here on the end. Maybe you see that as the end point of the perspective. If you want the eye to continue, you can you can get rid of it. That's completely up to you either way. My personal feeling is I would take it off. Um, but there's people here, I'm sure, that like it on. So, uh, beautiful image. Really nice work. Again, uh, minimum noise. The sky looks great. I love the lines here heading out to who knows where. Beautiful curve. Um, who did the picture? Mike, I did that. Mark. Well, it's pretty awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I was on a, this was shot about a year ago and I was at a workshop and um, I'm not a morning person either. This is probably the first <laughs> morning I've seen in years. <laughs> she dragged us out to take, you know, sunrise pictures at the pier and um, I was taking them. And actually this is the one that I kind of submitted at the end of our workshop for people to look at. And I originally hadn't even seen the swirling from the long exposure mm -hmm. in, in, and somebody else said, Oh, that's really cool. How you did that. And I'm like, I did. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> how I did what? <laughs> you know, the, the uh, couple of points that you brought up is one of the things I had to get rid of, or I felt I had to get rid of, there was a fishing boat on the horizon with a bright light. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, I, I can get rid of that easily. And it's not so easy because it had a reflection all the way down to the beach. <laughs> oh, boy. So I had to work on that for a little while to get that right. Um, I kept wondering and wondering if I should get rid of that trash can or not. And um, I think you're right. I think it would look a lot better if I would get rid of that. So, you know, ugly blue plastic trash cans are kind of <laughs> weird. Um, and the other thing is I, I, I tried to... I, Again, I didn't go into Photoshop or anything like that, um, but I played a little bit with the light at the end. And it, if I took that that light, that, that bright spot that's sticking out of the bottom of the pier out, um, it almost went out of balance with the one on the other side of the pier. Okay. Because there's two lights at the end there. Yeah, right in here. Yeah. And also it, you know, I I would have had taken the lamp out too above it as well as that. So I might play with it again, but I was, you know, when I started thinking about it, I was like, you know, it the light there's natural. It's it's there. Right. So 
Like, you know, and I was like, well, what do, would I have to do something with the uh, reflection in the water and things like that? Yeah. Well, it it provides an endpoint also. Yeah. It's almost too bright though. I tried to tip, I tried to bring it down a little bit. It just, it, it went gray real quick. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. But thank you for your review. Okay. All right. Questions or comments from anyone? Okay. So assuming this is a long exposure, this isn't multiple images stick to get stitched together, is it? No, this is this was shot at about six tenths of a second. Nice. Thank you. Okay. Okay, autumn in blue. Um again, I I had mentioned before that sometimes you'll fight halos when there's a sharp contrast. And one thing that, that causes halos is over sharpening. So be a little careful with that. If you're trying to get like, for instance, the tree branches, super sharp, uh, don't worry about those so much. Or if you did any kind of masking, like I said, you can do what's called feathering and, and ease up on it. So if you're over sharpened, it's going to show and that really the only the only part it's showing is in the sky and against those little teeny tiny twigs so um be a little careful with that the exposure looks good there's detail everywhere so you did a nice job with that um also when you're using a wide angle it maintains focus for a long long way and that's good in this case at least in my opinion it is i like that you can see the flowers in the corner as well as the trees in the back and you've you work your way back with some depth there uh also um it's a good i think a good choice for you to have all that detail in the front because there's a lot of things to look at in the front so my main suggestion so far is to be careful with that uh sharpening Okay, I also like as far as composition goes, you have an, a nice smooth S curve there, which balances all that activity in the middle of the shot. And if, if some people would think, well, I don't like that road there. Well, I like it because it's a smooth, calm balance. There's an S curve that takes you right out of the image. So it's active on one side and a little calmer on the other one. Again, you used layers. You also used um, repeated shapes. Sometimes that's called rhythm. And you have that here with the round crowns of the chrysanthemums and then the pumpkins and then the rocks. So you've worked your way back through with repeated shapes of spheres, we'll say. So uh, it's a nice work there composition wise. One thing that I might suggest is, is, is if this is a place you can get to again, maybe you can back up and include the entire water feature, see what you think of that. And that'll give you another round shape to deal with. And that also will let more space between your reflection, the edge of the reflection and the edge of the water, which maybe will make it so that it can breathe a little better have a little more room um i do like your center of interest which is here and this is this is absolutely perfect proof that lighter values come forward look how obvious that is and it's also obvious that these are all behind it that they kind of fell away so uh, good job there using the higher values to advance. Uh, Color-wise, it's not an accident they put, that they put a purple one beside a yellow one because that's a, a complementary color scheme there. And what happens is you've got all kinds of color here, and then it's fairly monochromatic here which makes your eye pop right there and then work its way up to your center of interest. So composition-wise, you did good there. Color-wise, someone did it for you, but you captured it, so very nice there. Uh, let's see. As far as any 
processing suggestions I might have. Number one, I would remove the car. It's, it's not really necessary for what you want to say with your image. Um, I already mentioned to try backing off on the sharpening in this area. See what you think about that. Um, I wanted to ask you if this is a sky replacement or not, because sometimes if you um, sharpen before you put that on, you might end up with some halos. Um, and I might think about not sharpening this, but sharpening this. See what you think of that idea. So all in all, uh, my suggestions are remove the car, ease up on the sharpening, and maybe try backing up unless you'll fall into another water feature by doing that and see if you can include the rest. Okay, who did this one? Hey, Mike, Dave Marchetto. Thanks so much. Where is this, Dave? You know, um, it's very readily available to me. That's the um, beginning of where my new home is. It's uh, Oh, my God. In Cornwall. So I go by this all the time. And um, that blue hour, Mike, only lasted probably less than 15 minutes. <laughs> so... And I, I was concerned about them turning off the, <laughs> the fountain because Blue Hour was at five o'clock sharp and uh, I was sweating it. <laughs> ah, true, true. Now, you know, you're a master of looking at the spots. So I knew the car was never going to get by you. <laughs> <laughs> what Sorry. happened here, the first image was processed beyond all hope. <laughs> and so this was a replacement image and you know the thumbnail looked similar i didn't want to just reset the image that i was working on mm -hmm. it was driving me crazy and i just didn't see the car till i submitted it it's like the typo in the email you know yeah i do i understand completely but uh, yeah i went back and got rid of that as far as the uh, contrast the 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 one previously was was much softer and i liked it better Mike, whatever, uh, you know, goes with the sky, the, that really sharp white foreground almost just disappears with just a little bit reduction in contrast. So it, it looks much, you know, much better when you take the sharpening okay. uh, off, uh, okay. you know, off for sure. So, um, yeah, I really I really appreciate your thoughts. That's the, that's my iPhone and I put it on the wide angle and uh, you know, just got really close to those flowers, which um, you know, I was actually working on a composition that uh, was to the left. It was a little nicer, I thought, but then the blue sky suddenly jumped out, and uh, <laughs> you know, I had to re uh, recompose. So anyway, that's uh, that's the story there. I really appreciate your thoughts. Okay, well, it's nice that you can go back again and again. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. And also get rid of that rock, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, questions or comments from anyone on uh, David's image? Oh, sorry, I forgot. Just... Uh, David, uh, Mike did mention the possibility it was a sky replacement. Did you replace the sky? Oh, yeah, I, ha I made a note about that. No, it just looks uh, wonky because of uh, the <laughs> the high contrast and sharpness. But no, that's the real deal. It was very impressive. Uh, I tried yeah. to grab a little bit more blue, you know, with the with the sliders. But it, it was it was really cool um, that it all kind of came together there. Okay, thanks. What software were you using to edit in? What's that again, uh, Chris? Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was asking what software were you using? Oh, oh, uh, I almost use uh, almost always use uh, Lightroom, Chris, and um, it you know it, it it does pretty much what I uh, what I want to. The software you use would that do anything different than than the Lightroom? No, and I wouldn't. Yeah, I was just curious. Um, I wasn't trying to push any form of software yeah out. yeah what what software you were using yeah yeah because i'm always open to uh to changes and maybe someday i'll get into photoshop thanks guys
a momentary pause in time. Technically, this is really quite beautiful. Um, it's sharp, but smooth and creamy at the same time. So that's a, that's a nice combination for sure. Uh, there's details. I'm, I, I looked really closely and I think it's a result of the computer screen that there's less detail in a mountain than there probably is um, in a print because I can see some things right here. Even that they're a lighter value than the mountains, but I know they exist. So I'm going to say that there's probably detail in here. Um, composition wise, this is a perfect use of layers. You have a dark, you have a light, you have a lighter, and then let's start again. Dark, light, and then lighter, and so on. And that is a big provider of depth, like I said before. So you can definitely feel that this is closer than this. Compositionally, um, there's things happening there that make it seem closer too. But as far as the, um, the values go, really, really good use of layers there. It's very, very balanced. This is balanced with this. This orange is balanced with this orange. I see that there's a lighter area balanced with a darker area. Really, really nice. Really nice. The reflections, um, I can see that there's a little darkening in here because there's a little less orange in there. So, um, so good job on that. I also like the diagonal lines, which suggest movement, which carries you from here to here. So good work there compositionally, very, very strong. Um, it's a, it's serene, and yet there's a lot to look at. Again, sorry to sound like a broken record, but the orange and blue thing really, really happens in nature a lot. Really a lot. Good use of light values and dark values. And I think I mentioned before, when I say values, you can imagine this turn to black and white, and then the lighter ones are a lighter value, the darker areas are a darker value. If you've ever read or talked about the zone system, Ansel Adams zone system, that's really a set of values that go from dark all the way to light. So when I say value, that's what I mean. This is a almost the same value as this even though they're different colors. This is close in value to this, even though they're different shapes or forms. So that's what I mean by values. Uh, processing wise, is it's excellent. I struggle a little bit as to trying to match the reflections to the sky, but they do. Here's the darker orange over here the lighter orange over here, the darkness here, and so on and so forth. So um, beautiful shot, a beautiful shot. And I like the detail here too. Okay, whose is this? The uh, photographer is Elaine Shook. Unfortunately, she's not able to be with us this evening. But her comment to me was that uh, she was prim primarily interested in creating a mood with that image. Mm-hmm. And I thought that might be hers because I think this is Deep Creek Lake. I would guess that it is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions or comments? Okay, on to the next one, Mike. Okay. Um, as you can see, it's Silent Sentinel. Technical-wise, uh, the exposure really is quite good. And this is a bit of a difficult situation here exposure wise um let's see i had that there's no detail really up here but again i'm going to blame that on the computer screen and if there is no detail up here uh give your shadow slider a try maybe mask out this area or even uh, go for it the whole way and see see what that does um this 
splotches here. I'm going to guess there's a street light somewhere shining through trees, but I think that's kind of cool, actually. I, I like that. Um, let's see. The focus looks good. Focus looks sharp. It's composition-wise, it's balanced. I know some people say, well, don't put something in the middle. And normally, I would think, don't put something in the middle. But in this case, uh, we have a balance. We have some information down here, and I see part of a building. We have the same over here with the um, windows, I guess the sashes over here and over here. So that's that's a balanced composition. Uh, lower left and lower right, again, I just mentioned. Uh, looks like a wide angle shot. And when you do that and you get low and shoot up, it, it makes the thing kind of disappear into space. But this doesn't do that. This says to me wide angle, but this doesn't because it's right centered. It's, it's the edges of the wide angle lens that tend to pull things away. So, um, so good thinking there with the wide angle stuff. Uh, the warm and cool colors, definitely. Again, I won't even say at this time because you can see it, orange and blue. Um, the warm and cool combination. It doesn't always have to be orange and blue. It's, if it's warm and cool, that'll provide some contrast for you. Uh, as far as any processing, I would get rid of this. Again, it's my opinion. And there's also a little refraction right here. I would try to remove that as well. Down at the bottom, get rid of that. It's a it's this one of the strongest values, and maybe this too. But all in all, it's it's kind of unusual, which is kind of nice. Uh, let me see. I have getting rid of the street light and the white mark, um, the orange spot, and lighter shadows in the trees. Okay, I think I covered it. Who did this one? Uh, that's me, Mike Rod Frazier. Where is it and what is it? <laughs> uh, this was at the, the Carlisle trip. Uh, oh, yeah, this is the on the square of the Soldiers Memorial. Okay. And, uh, I don't know if you if you passed that by or not. Uh, I but didn't passed it all by because I wasn't there. Oh, 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 that's right. <laughs> it was Mark, Mark, not Mike. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, the light on the the bottom left. I actually, uh, the the original light was even brighter, and I replaced <laughs> it with a a, a muted light. But, so <clears throat> maybe I should have just removed the whole thing, but I don't know. And uh, the dark area, I kind of did that on purpose just to okay. uh, balance out the the uh, light on the right side. All right. So yep. I'm not sure whether to leave leave that or or not. And I well, knew you'd find something for me to a dot or something. I, I didn't even see that on the bottom. <laughs> that's that's what I get paid the big bucks for, Rod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'll I'll try some of your suggestions and see if it uh, improves it, uh, the image. Is that what this is? Is it a, a light shining through trees? No, that was actually the monument itself. That's what oh, it, okay. That's what it looked like. Okay. Well, I know you didn't have much choice, but photographing a monument or anything looking up always makes it seem more impressive and monumental, for lack of a better word. So th that was a good choice there. Oh. Thanks. Thanks for your uh, comments. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, questions or comments for Rod or Mike on this image? Oh, we have a subdu subdued group tonight, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on to number seven. Bridge under a big blue evening. Uh, really good exposure. Real good exposure. Now, these lights here, you can see value-wise, they aren't white. 
they're kind of a yellowish, which they're actually red lights, but the strength of the light kind of wipes the color out on your sensor. This one isn't. Um, oops. Nice, sharp focus. Uh, there's a good contrast involved here with the cool foreground and the um, orangey background under the bridge and even on the bridge. Uh, Composition-wise, the leading lines are really tremendous here. Put the real good use. Um, and you can see the bridge following the lay of the ground, which is, again, linear perspective, takes you right back to the vanishing point, which means you have to travel through the image. And you also want to travel through the bike lane. And that's that's a good compositional tool there because the squares of the bike lane, uh, I think, oh, hook up with a lot of the work on the bottom of the bridge. So I think this connects a lot with this and even to the point that it moves a little bit left to right and this moves left to right. I like how this and this follow under the bridge. And it's very cool that there's some people there. There's somebody way in the back, right between these two, and there's some people over here. So that's that's kind of cool that it's not just an empty landscape, so the cityscape, I guess. I also like the blue and orange combo right there, just like over here. Uh, let's see here. The people provide a point of interest. I like the vertical crop, by the way. Normally, you wouldn't think about um, doing that with a long bridge, but the situation you were in called for the vertical crop because your, your main thing was right here. This is the anchor that the eye wants to jump on, and it's repeated by two verticals right here. So good work compositionally, for sure. Uh, let me see here. The stoplights also, I like that they too head back to a vanishing point. Uh, Color-wise, I, you know, same thing. The orange and blue is just perfect in the sky. And the bridge is the orange and blue complementary set. Um, processing, let's see. I would remove here. That's not really helping what you want to do, in my opinion, anyway. And try also removing the cell tower and see if you think that that um, improves the attention being paid to the bridge and to the walkway. So really, my suggestions are see what you can do about removing that corner. See if you like how that looks and try removing this and see what you think of that. But you use color really, really well. It's a good crop. Compositionally, it is strong. And whose is this one? It's uh, me, uh, Dan Olson. Yeah, uh, Dan, ben that's Franklin. awesome. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, Ben Franklin Bridge uh, in Philly, of course, uh, just was walking, happened to be there at the Blue Hour. I don't take a lot of pictures like this. So that was uh, when I had to shop for my recent inventory. That was easy to do because it was either this one or one, one other one. So <laughs> um, so selection was it was pretty easy, and I think the only thing I'd spent on here, I did do a little post on it, um, but uh, the main thing I think was uh, it, it was handheld, and it was just with my kit zoom on my Nikon. Mm -hmm. um, but the, yeah, I did I did spend a little time with cropping. Cropping was kind of intentional, and 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 getting some of the uh, proportions back in that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, I appreciate the comments, and and I was I kept debating all over the street lights, and I can't believe I was too lazy to not remove the antenna. That was actually a good catch, but. Uh, uh, but the bottom right corner, I didn't even, never even, never even phased me on that one. But I appreciate the comments and, and uh, insight. That was more thought than I gave it. So thank you. You're welcome. So uh, what you're saying is you presented 50% of your Blue Hour work tonight? Yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, questions or comments for uh, Dan or for Mike? Okay, Mike, on to the last one. Old Ben, which I believe is Ben Franklin Bridge also. Uh, beautiful, beautiful exposure as far as um, 
light and dark goes really, really nice. The reflections are, are beautiful. There's detail everywhere. Um, the noise is smooth. It was impressive tonight how many people used a high ISO and took care of the noise. That's, that's nice. Um, sharp all the way through from start to finish, which maybe says wide angle lens to me. Because if you're using a, a, a an aperture of like F22 to maintain focus all the way through, then you're looking at incredible shutter speeds. And the water in the bottom left tells me it wasn't like a half a minute exposure or anything. So, um, so good work there using the high ISOs. Don't be afraid of that because the noise reduction stuff they have these days is fabulous. Uh, beautiful exposure, sharp all the way through. Composition-wise, I like the relationship between the line of the edge of the rocks and the line of the bridge. I like this right here, connected with this right here. I think that looks good. And you'll notice there's lots and lots and lots of little round shapes in through here and lots and lots and lots of little round shapes through there. I like the relationship between this and this. I think that's really nice. Um, the bridge again, strong linear perspective, especially with the um, reflection. You can see them converging out in space somewhere and that helps the viewer move through your image. Uh, again, diagonal lines show motion and action, which is perfect for a bridge because everybody on it better be in motion. Um, good cropping there. Good cropping. You're just a little tight right here with your crop. So um, think about that a little bit. Color-wise, you have cool colors. You have warm colors. And when they... When they fight each other, that's really nice. The bridge is absolutely a beautiful kind of blue. And the sky, um, I've talked a lot of tonight about um, complementary color schemes. Well, the sky is a really good example of what's called analogous color scheme. If you can picture or you have a um, color wheel, analogous colors are side by side or in the same I guess family, you could say, on the color wheel. So this is really nice. It runs from a blue to a lavender to a light lavender to a blue, a darker blue. So um, good work there. This blue is, is beautiful. That blue is really nice. Uh, again, uh, processing-wise, about all I would do and and... The reason I'm picky about some of this stuff, and, and you can think it's ridiculous and forget about it, but I try to imagine it as a print. And what's there stays there. So I, these two rocks are cut in half. I would get rid of those because they're a lighter value. So I would just clone those out. And I'd see about this, maybe darkening a little bit, because that's really... Um, one of the one of the brightest values in the whole thing. So maybe darken it, which kind of gets gross sometimes. It gets like a gray thing on it. So maybe clone with the water just two, three, four percent, something like that. See what you think of that idea. But it's a beautiful shot. This is really cool how the colors change from bottom to top. Um Nice work. Maybe you want to remove that because it's only halfway on. But it's a beautiful, beautiful image. Um, yeah, nice work. Who did this one? I did that, Mike. Uh, George Kurzak here. How are you today? Thank you for the comments. And uh, actually, I was working in Philadelphia for a number of years, but I kept my house here in York, so I had an apartment in Maniac. So every night, I have thousands of blue hours. <laughs> I love blue hour. And I went over to Camden on us because it was a stormy night. I knew it was going to be cloudy. And I set up from the Camden side to do this shot. It's a five exposure. 
long exposure, actually. It's a total of a minute and a half of exposures combined. Uh, what, it, even though it's deceiving because that ripple that you would see below the first tower, that's actually the mud layer in the, in the oh river. Oh, my gosh. And uh, that's what caused that great reflection. And uh, so I just set up and I waited about an hour for the light to be what I wanted and was flipping away. Do you have um, hundreds and hundreds of blue hour? You might want to get together with, I think it was Dan that has two. <laughs> yeah, average them out. <laughs> if you want to do a field trip for him. Any questions about this one? Thanks. It's really nice. It's beautiful. Well, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Can I make one more suggestion? Sure. Is there a thin white line showing on your screen? I think that might be because sometimes, at least with my D750, when I performed in HDR, sometimes when, they, when the images got folded together, there would sometimes be a ever so slight mismatch. Okay. All right. For the print, I would, yeah, I would, if I was printing this, I would definitely, you know, clone that out. All right. Yep. Okay, Dennis, that's it. Okay. Hey, Mike. Put it up. Dennis, Any Dennis, questions or comments? Hold for... on a minute. Yeah, okay. I, I, I've got one. Mike, can you go back to Elaine's image, which I think is image five? Yeah. How would you print that? As far as it, it 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 looks to me like if I was to print it the way it looks right now, it would come out too dark. Yeah, uh, one thing I would do is I would mask this and see if I can get a little tiny bit of detail out of it. Because on the screen, I can't see if there is or isn't. But I'll, I'll presume there isn't because what happens is, I don't know about you, Mark, but when I print... Since I haven't gone through all the the hoops to jump, my print is a little bit dark also. Yeah. So my my personal pro printing profile starts out with plus 30 brightness and then go okay. from there. So yes, I would lighten up a little bit unless she said she was going for the moodiness though. Yeah, but I'd be I really like this picture. I'd be afraid of it blocking up. Yeah, I, yes. And if it blocks up, that'll take away half the beauty because it'll even, some papers will even be shiny there. Right. So, yes, that's one thing I would try to do is uh, mask here and see if I can get some more detail out of it. Okay. Thanks. Mike, that raises a question for me, uh, from me. <clears throat> The fact that you were raising the brightness of the image to print it, mm -hmm. could that possibly mean that your monitor's too bright? Uh, that actually means that my data color spider has sat in its box for two months. Is <laughs> <laughs> what that means. You need so, to recalibrate, yes, that's, huh? That's absolutely very possible, yes. Uh, yeah, I found that to be true, too. I was adjusting the brightness and making it brighter. In, in, and then I went back into develop module in Lightroom, and I, I took a closer look at the histogram of some of those images and mm -hmm. realized that they weren't as bright as they should have been. Uh, the images the questions? themselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in, in the develop module, yeah, I, I should have brightened them up a little bit. Uh, right. Any other questions or comments for anybody? Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. Okay, yeah, thanks to the participants, the uh, eight folks who uh, uh, sent in images tonight, and thanks for Mike. We appreciate your comments and your participation. Okay, any last words from anyone before I close off for the evening? Yeah, I do, if you don't mind, Dennis. No. If, if you're thinking you would like to submit something, but you're nervous about it, or you don't know what they're going to say, or you're thinking, oh, mine aren't nearly as good as these, or whatever the case might be, every single one of us was nervous when we put something out to be abused the first time, <laughs> or, or even to be looked at. It's nerve-wracking, but it's also how, how you can learn. And, and the things that I say as a judge really are my own opinion and my own suggestions. So if if you're thinking, oh, this mine's just not that good, go for it. 
put it out there. Um, I've said to Dennis a couple of times, maybe we should have a, we did this one other time. We had an image review for first timers who have never put something up. So it's easy for me to say, oh, just go for it. And, and, but I know how nerve wracking it is. So give it a shot. Make the reviewer work. <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree. I, I encourage you know people to to put themselves out there and take a chance. But Mike, I have to give you credit uh, as a reviewer. I think you, your comments are very considerate. You're very kind. You're you're accurate and critical, but in in a good teaching sort of way. So I, I appreciate your approach, and that's why we continue to have you back every year. Oh well, thank you. <laughs> I have a thought about uh, scoring and I'm, I'm kind of on the fence. I know the club is not uh, scoring um, photos like, uh, you know, like, like, like we did previously. I mean, I'm, I'm torn. I think that's a really good idea, especially given mine today, but, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but otherwise, um, you know, I, seriously, I am on the fence. Uh, Mike is uh, certainly one of the more uh, caring, um, helpful reviewers, uh, if I may say. And, um, you know, sometimes I'm just curious about what the score might be. But I don't know how others feel about it. I, I guess just count me on the fence as to whether score or not score. Well, I've, I've had, I've done reviews that I had to score and it's been anywhere from one to nine to one to 60 to, and, and when you get to a point that you have to decide, is this a 57 or a 56, it gets not just ridiculous, but almost unfair in a way. So, you know, if we want to say like, a, B, C, D, or 10, 9, A, 7, something like that. But I've had to, to judge already that the scoring was just crazy, mm -hmm. you know, detailed. And that I don't think is helpful. Yeah, and, and I, I guess after all is said and done, at least for me, the scoring just adds a little bit more of... Uh, of lack of a better word, anxiety. So, uh, you know, you know, I think I think it's a double-edged sword. I really do. Yeah. Um, but um, it's probably a good decision, at least this year. You know, not to score, and, and and I guess just see how it goes. So far, so good. Well, I guess it's a way to measure if you're making any progress. The mm. problem happens when more than one judge is giving scores. Mm. So if I give scores on in February and someone else gives scores in March, you, you, you have to make sure that you're looking at consistent things or consistently looking at things and evaluating things. Like I evaluate things in composition differently from some other judge probably. So then that's another issue to think about when it comes to numbers. Do they mean the same to both judges? Mm -hmm. Mike, it's always nice to have you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, just to, to follow up a little bit, uh, because that is an important issue, uh, competitions versus uh, reviews. Every year, you know, the directors uh, meet annually, and every year we talk about that. Uh, and this is the first year where the directors agreed not to have any competitions. They're, that they're all image reviews. And the primary reason for doing that is a, a philosophical one where the, the, as a club, we want to foster a cooperative relationship rather than a competitive one. And, and we feel that giving a score to an image enhances the competitive nature uh, and, and really isn't very meaningful. So if you know someone got an eight versus someone got a six versus someone got a nine, you know it it just pits one member against another in terms of oh I scored better than you did, and, and that's not really what we want to to uh, uh, to, to promote. 
what we really think is important are the comments that the reviewers like Mike make in terms of critically analyzing your individual image to say to you, this is what, how I feel personally uh, about your particular image. This is what I think is good about it. This is where I think you could improve. So we think, think the real learning value, teaching value is in the reviews and, and not so much in, in giving it a score. What we also found out over the years uh, was that, you know, different judges would score very, very differently. So one judge would come in and give feel good scores of nines and tens. Uh, then another judge would come in and score fours and fives and sixes. So it was very arbitrary. But if you get into, if you deal with the, the nature of the image itself, that's not as arbitrary. Those are more of the guidelines of composition and, and the things about photography that we really want to teach. So in, in summary, the directors made a very conscientious decision, which has evolved over the years, to go forth with only image reviews and, and not do competitions. So that's the, the reasoning behind that. Okay, Dave, anything to, to wrap up from anyone else? Dave, when I, I judged that, York and at uh, Hershey, and they did it both with three judges, and you it was electronic. You judged from one to nine, and all three judged at the same time, and then the numbers would pop up on a screen, not in the not in our seated order, but they would come up, and it was surprising how many times it would be, uh, like seven, seven, and three, <laughs> or nine eight and five or it was it was really kind of not funny because if it, it was your piece that that we were judging you'd think what in the whole world so it's true it's totally you know arbitrary really whereas this way i kind of have to defend myself by explaining what i mean and that that's another good point some clubs do have multiple judges or reviewers operating in the same uh, competition or, or image review. And mm -hmm. we've always felt that that wasn't a good idea because of, of the different viewpoints and, and different biases that judges have. So let's hear you know, from one judge and, and not get conflicting opinions from different judges, several judges. Okay, any other comments? Uh, this is Mary Eileen. And I just wanted to compliment Mike by the way he dresses up and is very <laughs> professional every time he gives an image review. Yes. And I think that should be noted. He likes, to, he does a very nice job of presenting <laughs> himself as the reviewer. Well, thank you. Very appropriate. Thank you, Mary Eileen. Yes, I, I agree. Okay, guys, it's been a great evening. Thanks for your comments and thanks for your participation. Uh, we're signing off at this point. Hope to see you at the Capitol on uh, Friday and at uh, Ashcombe's on Saturday. Okay, good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Mike. Thanks You're again, welcome. Mike. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Chris, I'll see you at your next show online. <laughs>